Hello, hello. Okay, so the sound is working again. Hello, my name is Timothy Hobbs, and I'm going to be doing another a live coding session for veganbuddies.org, a mobile app that allows new perspective, newer prospective vegans to connect with experienced mentors who have been consuming a vegan diet and living a vegan lifestyle for a long time. Um, so everything we are doing here is open source and the project is funded to the extent that it is even funded it's not really funded at all but it's it's hosted by otoji ochi zs a czech nonprofit that promotes a vegan abolitionist movement that means that we want people to stop exploiting animals entirely and so last couple of weeks I was working on this matrix bot that would allow uh, the mobile app to look up other matrix users that were nearby that had been listed as mentors. Uh, and then I switched tact and I started working on another um, side of the problem, which was I was working on setting up a copy of the Lobster's message board server. And the purpose of this is that when you set up the Lobster's server, Lobster's allows users to invite other users in a kind of tree of invites. And I don't want random people to be able to become mentors without some kind of vetting process, because I don't want there to be trolls. I don't want there to be inexperienced people who are giving bad advice. I don't want there to be a lot of people who are giving just really outlandish advice, like you can eat the sunshine or something like that. I want people to give solid sound advice to the prospective vegans. And so we're going to create a tree of mentors who are going to give real good advice. And the lobster server already allows for this invite tree, so I just wanted to kind of just build off of that pre-existing product rather than reinventing the wheel there. And last week I did get a uh, lobsters running. Uh, I think it was here. Um, I don't even quite remember, to be honest, what I did to do that. Uh, maybe it was just Docker Compose up. And then I went to localhost 3000. And it was just magically there. But this hasn't loaded yet, I guess. Not sure if it's going to load. Let me check if what kind of containers are in the lobster server. Um, I seem to remember it just worked last time. So it has the proxy service, the database service, and the app service. And, uh -huh, it just took a while to load. Okay, so. I'm logged in as test, and basically the password is test test. And what I need to do is I need to make it as user-friendly as possible for people who are members here to invite other people so that we can create that tree invite tree. And I need to make it so that they can list their uh, matrix.org or matrix mm, chat handle here. And right now they have the ability to list a homepage and an about section. 
And I'm tempted to just rename homepage to Matrix Nick and uh, be done with it. But when I think about it a little bit further, it seems to me like there needs to be a really simple flow. So how is the mentor going to become a mentor? They're going to get an email from the Lobsters server inviting them to join Lobsters. And then they're going to install the, mo the Vegan Buddies mobile app. And then how are they going to connect it? That's like really a lot of steps involved. Um, Like, I don't know, ideally, you would just like take a, you would have the lobster server somehow show a QR code. And then the person with the mobile app would take a picture of the QR code and it would just somehow connect magically. Um, I think that would be the best, best flow. Hmm. I'm going to go check. Okay, so, um, how would we do this? I don't really know Ruby on Rails and I was kind of hoping I wouldn't have to learn Ruby on Rails. My whole purpose of using this whole lobster service was to avoid uh, learning Ruby on Rails or to avoid writing a new application to handle mm, authentication or something. But at the same time, there's obviously a few things that need to be done. So this invite a new user section of the settings page needs to be moved to its own page. I need to move this form to its own page because it's a central feature of the service that I'm creating is the ability to invite more mentors. Um, Hmm. Well, I guess the other way that it could be done, instead of having a QR code in Lobsters, it could be done that um, there was a link from Lobsters to the app. But that would mean that the person would have to log in on, on the Lobsters server, on their mobile phone, and then press that link to open up the Vegan Buddies app. Um, whereas this way you can have, you can log into the, it, with the QR code, you can log into the Lobster server on your desktop. Well, I guess, I guess there's no, no real distinction there. If there's the link or there's the, the QR code, like both can be supported because the QR code is actually encoding a link. So, so I guess there's no technical difference there. Um, hmm. Hmm. I guess the question is, how does this link thing work? How does it, um, how is the mobile app then going to communicate the matrix Nick back to the uh, Lobster's server. And I guess the next question I have is how is logging in on the Vegan Buddies app even going to work? Because like, I think at the start, we're going to use the matrix.org matrix server, but I think in the future, maybe we'll have our own veganbuddies.org matrix server. And yet I don't want it to be like that people are going to have to choose which server to use in the Vegan Buddies app. I want it to just be seamless that they have a username and password or ideally not a password. Ideally, like that they would have a username and maybe type in their phone number and get a, 
access code so they wouldn't have to remember a password. That's the way modern apps work is that you don't have passwords because people suck with passwords. One possibility would be to use the email address somehow as the key that um, hmm, how would that work? If the mail, email address was the key then then the person would log into the vegan buddies app with the, their email and also into lobsters with their email and we just somehow connect the two but that somehow is is questionable because email doesn't necessarily want to be a public piece of information like the email address shouldn't necessarily be a public piece of information and mm, so then you're gonna have to like look up the email as a hash and expose the emails or expose the email as a hash on the lobsters server that's definitely something that you need to like code extra I'm not sure how elegant it is i think it's better to try to like hook up with some kind of communication mechanism if you're going to program something new or if i'm going to program something new it's better to to have a more mm, like thorough or more complete communication mechanism than to just rely on one like simple hack of having that one key similar I think hmm So I guess I'm going to like start doing some notes now and because I obviously don't know how to do what I want and I need to think of what, how to do it. Mm. So I need to install Zornal. which I haven't done yet, apparently. Uh-huh. Um, I need to connect to the internet. <laughs> apparently, which I haven't done yet, apparently. That should not take such a long while. Um, mouse is work, tablet is working. And so, how do I do this though? Um, Okay, so I need to block out
Hello, hello. I'm back. Okay, so am I connected to the internet now? I had to turn everything off because I had to type in my Wi-Fi password and I don't want to mm, share that with everyone. Unfortunately, the, currently my system isn't working correctly with saving the Wi-Fi password for some reason. So, hmm, seems like something's wrong with the theme. Hmm. I wish there was a dotted page on Zernal. If somebody has a good way of doing that, then tell me. So, mm, I have the lobster server. And I have the mobile app. And I want to have it so that the person, I think the person logs in for, logs into both of these and I need to connect them somehow. So I need to mm, either send a message from Lobster, well I need to send a message from the mobile app to Lobsters with the Matrix Nick. That's pretty, pretty obvious. And Lobsters has to have a way of um, accepting that and like like one thing that's really really like common and popular is an OAuth workflow and the mobile app would be like uh, it would have this thing this button Sign in with lobster and and maybe like the mentor sign in would be sign in with lobsters and maybe the lobsters server could automatically like generate the matrix nick that it wouldn't um it wouldn't be like you created an account on Lobsters and created an account with Matrix. It would be like you created the Lobsters account and then Lobsters would somehow communicate with the Matrix server to create a Matrix Nick. Uh, obviously that Matrix Nick couldn't be connected with other Matrix identities, but is that really necessary? I don't think so. Um, and then the then the uh, then it would just be an OAuth lo uh, work f flow, and so the person would have one password. They would have their Lobsters password, and then Lobsters would be providing an OAuth uh, service. That seems like like perhaps the best possible solution, though I think that the like telephone number sign in is also like really good mm. I don't know how frequently people change telephone numbers if if it's going to be a problem that they're going to be writing us oh my telephone number changed I can't log in anymore mm.
Mm-hmm. So maybe, maybe one of the best ways to do it would be to have it so that when you open up the Vegan Buddies app, you would have the choice of, like, typing in your username and password, or signing in as a mentor. And if you sign in as a mentor, then you would get redirected to the Lobster's server where you would sign into the Lobster's thing. Using the OAuth workflow. That seems like it would, it would work. Let me look at how Uh, wait, app.element.io, how element does sign-ins mm, to the matrix.org, uh, whatever, sign-in. So I have OAuth workflows. So I can continue with Facebook uh, or Google or GitHub. And so I can either choose to have uh-huh that's interesting so they have like a really good good system for for authentication and it's open source so how hypothetically we can use this and nobody's gonna get mad at us mm. I wonder what the what the story is for then moving those accounts between matrix servers, right? Like home servers. Mm. And what it takes to get it so that a home server supports the OAuth flows. If I go back to the Vegan Buddies website and I look at the the wireframe, it was ima envisioned originally. Um, I don't have the ability to pause this video, unfortunately. But when it restarts, it was envisioned that there would just be the OAuth workflows. There would be no username and password that was specific to vegan buddies. But I don't, I don't think that we need to like necessarily hold true to Petter Benish's um, vision to that degree. I don't think that uh, that's necessary, but it was certainly a desire that sign in with Facebook and those other OAuth things would work. Um, So I guess um, I'm confused by this. Is is Synapse the default uh, home server? Or not? They say no, but element.io clearly supports it.
I'm confused. Like, here the person says no. And yet apps.element.io clearly supports um, OAuth. Okay, so that's quite confusing. Um, so Synapse supports OAuth. OpenID Connect is based on OAuth 2, so this PR is kind of redundant with 759 or 7059. For now, it only supports OpenID Connect compliant providers uh with the authorization code flow this could be expanded to support generic oauth2 provider uh, as long as they either support the open id scope or the user info endpoint to fetch user infos this is a work in progress here are a few things that we need that need to be done make the authorization token and jwk endpoints configurable Right now, they are discovered from a discovery document. Hmm. So it seems like you can add a new OAuth provider. Now, the, another question is like, where is this OAuth flow happening? Is it happening on Synapse on the home server or is it happening in the client? Um, because if it's happening in the client, then we need to deal with uh, like the question of how would we send, because we want to not only use OAuth for logging in, we want to uh, logging into the matrix uh, home server. We want to use it for s uh, sending to like an API endpoint on lobsters, um, some sort of uh, some sort of message that says to lobsters what our nick is. Um, and in, and who's going to be doing that is obviously uh, the client. We're not going to fork Synapse and create like some new behavior on the Matrix home server side of things. That's way too much work. Um, But it definitely seems to me like the OAuth flow is happening on the home server because the client ID and client secret are being stored on the home server and not on the client, which is correct from a security perspective, uh, but it's inconvenient for us.
The next question would be if there's some way on Matrix to prove that we logged in using the lobster's flow. Hmm. Wait. Gonna turn off the the lines, the grid on this page. It's just making it harder to see. Okay. So I don't really see how how that could happen. The 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 you kind of have to prove to lobsters that you signed in with them without actually having access to like the refresh token or the access token the refresh token and access token are going to be controlled i think it's just well i guess it's going to be both tokens are going to be controlled by the matrix home server and the the vegan buddies app uh, is not going to have access to those tokens so it can't use that access that it kind of sort of has it can't use that access to actually go and connect with the lobster server Any ideas? <laughs> okay. So somebody is writing in the chat Fran Kurzi. I don't know what that means. Maybe it's just spam. Not sure. Um
I don't know if the Vegan Buddies app gets any information from the Matrix home server about, like, this this part of the connection, you know? It, does it get the email address, at least? If, if it's even, like, connecting with the email address, I'm not sure what primary key it could be using. Um, we should be able to find that here somehow. There's a bunch of documentation in this pull request. Um, oh, this is nice. Like, it's good that it's well documented, but just means there's more stuff here. Um, Not sure what JWKS is. Maybe Google will, or Kagi will tell me. The JSON web key set is a set of keys containing the public keys used to verify any JSON web token issued by the authorization server and signed using the RS-256 signing algorithm. So it's something to do with JSON web token, which is not uh, the same as OAuth. Um, but maybe JWT is used for authenticating the, the client. So the scopes are open ID and that's not the email scope. So what is the open ID scope? Open ID connect scopes are used by an application during auth authentication to authorize access to a user's details like name and picture. Each scope returns a set of user attributes, which are okay. Um, I'm not seeing any. Uh, so. It, the open ID scope returns the subclaim, which uniquely identifies the user. An ID token ISS AUD expiration. Uh huh. And these people use short versions of everything, so you have to kind of guess what they mean. Uh, and at hash claims will also be present. To learn about the ID token claims, read ID token structure. Um, so it said that we'll get ISS, AUD, X, EXP, IAT, and at hash. Um, copy that. Uh, Scratch sub ISD AUD EXP IAT at hash. Those are the One, two, three, four, five, six things that we get. 
Um, the ISS is something that we almost certainly don't care about. I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, they don't tell us? I thought they were supposed to tell us what these things were. Okay, so the JSON Web Token Standard. Um, well, this is just... Okay, so this does not have it. Okay, so issuer of the JWT subject. Okay, so this is some kind of username. Is this a human readable username or not? Um, not sure, um, audience, uh, expiration time, that's not something we get. So then we have IAT issued at time and at hash, uh, which isn't written here what it is. It's not, it's not important anyway. So the only kind of possible personal or unique information that we know about, um, or that the matrix server, the matrix home server knows about the user on lobsters is the S U B the subject. Um, and we're not even sure if that's like their lobster's username or something else. It's just not specified. And that's probably not even communicated to the, the client. Uh, so they're really not asking for the email scope here, as far as I can tell. Yeah, and the, the, there's there's no email scope, um, no first name, last name scope, nothing. Uh, I guess it's privacy conscience conscious, but so I guess we've kind of come to the like conclusion that it's a bit of a non-starter to um, to try to get the lobster to get access to an OAuth refresh token from the client side that's probably not going to happen so we can't communicate, we can't send a message. We're, we're trying to basically send a message from here to here, telling the lobster server, the matrix nick of the user and to connect and allow the lobster server to connect that matrix nick to the lobster's user. Um,
<laughs> You'd think it would be easy to do this, and yet it's not easy at all. Um... Like, obviously the Vegan Buddies app can con communicate with the Lobster's server, but how is the Lobster's server supposed to then connect that information with a specific Lobster's user in a secure way? Hmm. Okay, so here's one thing that occurs to me. What if you were to kind of duplicate the OAuth flow? And so this button wouldn't do this. It wouldn't start the OAuth flow with the matrix server. What it would do, I'm just gonna delete everything here. I guess move this down. Um, and so instead, we're going to do the OAuth flow with the lobster server. So that flow then gives us the ability to like talk to the lobster server and ask it um, if there's a matrix uh, identity associated with it and then what what we get, like, the eventual thing that we're going to get out of this is some kind of JWT, I guess. So this is going to send us a JWT that allows us to communicate with lobsters in a way that's associated with a specific lobster's account. And then... Uh... Once we do that, we initiate a second OAuth flow. Um, and how's this going to look to the user is one question. That's going to connect us to matrix. So that actually kind of makes sense in a really weird way. Um, and here we're probably going to get another JWT. Not really sure how that's going to work. Okay, so Unfortunately, like, unless we have yet another server, uh, then the Vegan Buddies app would need, to, like, 
If the Vegan Buddies app has the client's secret in it, then what can happen? Um, or better, or more importantly, what's the ye redirect u URL? Um, I guess the redirect URL would be one of those like weird URLs that's used to open up an Android or Apple app. Um, and, and like once, once you have all of these things connected up, then, then like, so this is step one. Step two, and then we have a step three, and step three would be that we then say we send the we send the matrix Nick to the lobster server and then it's all hooked up and step three can be skipped if, um, if step one tells us that we're already hooked up. And so the question is how do we prevent it from being like that the user sees two scare warnings. Do you want to connect the app with? Do you want to connect the app with? Because like lobsters would first ask, do you want to connect um, with the vegan buddies app? And then it would ask, do you want to connect with matrix? And uh, We don't, we don't want that duplication. Mm. I think that we can store the JWT, we can store the information about step one and three Step one and three only hap have to happen once, right? And we can store that in the Vegan Buddies app, in the app storage, so that the user is only going to go through that once. And every other time, they're only going to do step two. And then we just have to like somehow explain the situation to the user, and so that they... So when you type, when you press sign in as mentor for the first time, after the app is installed, they'll say, hey, we need to do a configuration step. Um, and uh, maybe there could even be some information about how to become a mentor. And then it's like you have a button connect and it would connect with the lobster server. And then the next times it would only do step two. I guess, uh, okay, um, maybe a different possibility would be that step two would just be exactly the same as the login with like this part of the login, the login for normal users for mentees. And uh, step one and three would actually be like a button that would only appear when the app is uh, like newly installed. I'm a mentor. And that would actually have the advantage that it would allow people to potentially reuse their matrix 
uh, Nix if they were already on the same Matrix server. Um, and it would also simplify the transition from being a mentee to being a mentor. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's actually the best way to do this, is to separate those two OAuth flows entirely. And it's like, I'm a mentor, uh, does steps uh, one, and then it saves the, like, fact that the person is a mentor and this JWT token to memory and then uh, it would have the uh, like matrix nix sending step uh, like it would save the fact that it's connected with lobsters and then the first time it logged into matrix um, it would send the matrix nick. The uh, question is, what if the person logged in with a different matrix nick? What are we supposed to do? Um, I think that's a really, really weird edge case. I think that's a really weird edge case. I think that I'm not even going to deal with that situation. Um, Okay, so it's been an hour, and uh, I'm getting kind of tired. I've been working quite a bit lately, and so I'm going to end the the recording now and and the stream now. And next week, I'm going to be streaming again, and I will work on two things. I will work on um, so there's. I guess three changes that need to be made to Lobsters. One is that Lobsters needs to have its own OAuth service uh, for authenticating with Lobsters. So that's one change. The Another change is that um, it needs to have an endpoint uh, for uh, lobsters, uh, so it needs to it needs to be able to authenticate with OAuth and also get a refresh token through OAuth. So it needs to have the refresh token scope, and then it needs to have an API with an endpoint for sending a matrix NIC. Uh, so those are two changes, and the third thing that needs to happen is that the server, uh, here it is, um, needs to have this um, invite new user form on its own page. I guess I'm going to go ahead and, what's this, wrong type argument string t now? Um, I think that I actually made some changes to get status. Um, get fetch. Get. Uh,
Okay, we did that correctly. And now what I want to do is I want to create issues. I want to create tickets for um, uh, making these changes so that I'm not just saying it on the stream, but I'm also like documenting what needs to be done. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new uh, issues list for the lobsters part of things. And so there should now be a directory here. Um, not sure what's wrong with uh, Dured right now. It's not updating the listing. So I'm going to create one ticket for um, I'm searching for where it is in the source code because it's obviously a lot more pleasant to uh, program if you're not doing all the searching about and searching manually. So Hmm. Is that true? Invitations. Okay. Maybe we'll use that feature. Um, it, for allowing people to sign up. I don't know if Yeah, I'm probably going to set that up, um, but it's not a priority right now. I'm just going to check if it's not possibly already done. Don't, 
Invite.html. Okay, so there's already a page for this. Um, so I don't actually need to create a new uh, a new page. I need to change this text, I think, and I need to uh, make it so that this page is linked to up here. Uh, so. We need to link the invites page from the home page. So that's one thing that we need to do. Set up an OAuth server. I think I recall that there was even a service. Who is JCS? Is, is Okay, so somebody already asked for it and didn't get it. So it's not implemented, obviously, and we're just going to have to do that. And the third thing that we wanted was the uh, uh, endpoint for setting matrix NIC. Okay, so those were the three things that I thought were necessary. I've documented them. And now I can sign off. Um, go ahead and commit this.
I still have a little bit of energy. Maybe I'll try to figure out how... No, I'm not. I won't. I was going to think about trying to figure out how to add this link here. It can't be that difficult. Okay, so signing off for now. Goodbye.